In this lecture, we're going to take a closer look at the most commonly used inputs on the Material Inputs node. So I'm going to create a new material, name it My Emissive Material, and then open it. All right, so the first thing you should know is that this list of inputs and whether or not they are enabled or disabled will change depending on the settings of three of the material's properties. Those properties are material domain, blend mode, and shading model. These properties will be covered in detail later on in this section, but for now, just know that their settings are what control this list of inputs. For this lecture, I'm just going to cover the most commonly used inputs that are available with the default settings of surface, opaque, and default lit. So the first input, which you should be familiar with by now, is base color. So this is just the color of an object as it appears before it is affected by any of these other attributes. And then the metallic input, as we've seen, can be used to make a material look like it's made out of metal. Unlike some of the other inputs, like roughness for example, you will generally only set the metallic input to a value of either 0 or 1. So you would use a value of 0 if the material is non-metal, and a value of 1 if it is metal. The only time you should use a value between 0 and 1 for the metallic input is when the material is metal, but it's meant to appear rusty or dirty in some way. All right, and now the difference between the specular and roughness inputs can be a little confusing. Specular is used to define how reflective a material is, with zero being completely non-reflective and one being fully reflective. And so this can be confusing because so far we've been using roughness to control reflectivity. But there is a subtle difference between the two, which is this. Specular controls how reflective a material is, while roughness controls how much that reflected light is scattered, and thus how blurry or sharp the reflection is. All right, so which of these properties then should you use to control the reflectiveness of your materials? Well, in the real world, almost all objects have the same specular value, which is represented by the default value of specular in Unreal Engine, which is 0.5. So, for example, a rough block of stone and a mirror both have an average amount of specular, but the stone is very rough, while the mirror is extremely smooth, and thus reflects the light back evenly. So, if you're designing a material that is meant to look as realistic as possible, then the vast majority of the time, you will want to leave the specular input at its default value and use the roughness input to control the reflection. All right, and then one last thing I want to mention about the roughness input is that in the real world, very few materials are completely rough or completely smooth, even if they might be close. So instead of using values of 0 and 1 for these materials, consider using values like 0 0.1 or 0 0.9 for a more realistic effect. All right, so the next input I'm going to talk about is emissive color. This input is used to provide a color to the material that should glow. So I'm going to create a vector3 node and define its color to be pure red. And first, I'm going to connect it to the base color input. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And now I'm going to hold down the control key to disconnect that and then connect the node to the emissive color input instead. Okay, so now this material has a faint glow to it that it didn't have when this node was connected to the base color input instead. All right, so all of the inputs we've looked at so far accept values between zero and one, but some inputs accept overdriven values, meaning values greater than one, which will result in special behaviors. The emissive color input is one of these. Values greater than one will increase the brightness of the glow. So if we want to increase the brightness of a certain color, we need to multiply the value of each of its three channels by the same amount. So for example, I'm going to open the color picker again for this node and multiply each of the color amounts by 10. So anything times zero is zero, so the green and blue values stay at zero, but then one times 10 is 10. So I'm going to increase the red value to 10. And as you can see, the color remained the same, but now it's glowing a lot brighter. All right, so it was easy to do that math in our heads because the values were so simple. 
But what if you had a color with more complex numbers, such as this? Instead of doing the math yourself, a more efficient method would be to use a multiply node. A multiply node can be created by holding down the M key and left clicking in the graph. Okay, so now I'm going to connect the vector 3 node to the A pin. And then I'm going to set the B pin to 10. Alright, so this will multiply each of the three values of the vector 3 node by 10 and then output the result. So now I'm going to connect the output to the emissive color input. And as you can see, this color is now glowing a lot brighter. And now, if we want to quickly adjust the amount of glow, all we have to do is edit the value in the B pin. Okay, and one last thing I want to mention about emissive color is that it is self-illuminating, meaning it is not affected by external lighting. So if emissive color is the only input that your material uses, you should go to the shading model property and set that to unlit. This will make the material significantly cheaper to render and won't affect the way it looks. All right, so next, I will be covering the rest of the material inputs in the upcoming lectures with a few exceptions. One of those is the ambient occlusion input. Ambient occlusion is just a fancy name for the shadows that are produced from indirect lighting, meaning light that has been reflected off another surface. Unreal's old lighting system couldn't accurately calculate this data, and so this ambient occlusion input could be used to input a texture that would provide the data. However, Unreal's new lighting system, Lumen, can calculate the data accurately and efficiently, and automatically does so. And so this input is no longer needed, except for backwards compatibility with older projects. And then the surface thickness and front material inputs are used in conjunction with a new material system called Substrate. However, as of version 5.2, Substrate is still considered experimental. Alright, so that will conclude the lecture on material inputs.